Next speaking slot is chaired by Deputy Clare Daly and Benin McGrath. Deputy Daly. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, John Coyle. We'll but try and get you have, it in before, you have six minutes anyway. Before the break. Okay, listen. Um, you know, I suppose I'm speaking here as somebody who has a family that goes back to the foundation of the Irish Army, but also somebody who is a, an internationalist and a socialist. And in that context, uh, very clear on the understanding that it's ordinary, always ordinary people and ordinary soldiers who pay the price in any war. And I think the Second World War was no different. We all know the stories of the promises of freedoms and homes fit for heroes and people ending up uh, being sent back heroes only fit for homes with all the scars that go uh, with war. And I think the issue here before us really is not just how these men were treated at the time, but also the long delay in the Irish state recognising it and dealing with uh, this issue, which I think is a feature really of a lack of political backbone and is also linked to our relationship with uh, Britain. It is a fact that the British government, seven years after the ending of the Second World War, uh, announced an amnesty for 10,000 of its members who were involved in desertion at, at uh, that time and obviously this was an army that was actively involved in uh, the combat. Here we are 60 years later still deliberating on uh, what to do about it and I do think we have to approach the issue with a, a sense of history absolutely but also a sense of, of perspective and uh, humanity and I do believe that one of the reasons why we've delayed on this and that there was such punitive measures imposed on army deserters in these circumstances was that it wasn't just about punishing uh, the men for desertion but it was equally about where they deserted to and to me that's the only explanation for why this issue hasn't been addressed before now it's because they deserted and ended up uh, joining the uh, British Army and in that sense I think the issue has been surrounded by a certain amount of anglophobia that has existed really since the foundation of the state to me it is a legacy of the Hippocrat hypocritical uh, relationship and attitude that the weak Irish state has had in its dealings with uh, Britain where years ago clearly obviously uh, the battle was fought for independence uh, against Britain but as James Connolly warned at the time that if you could remove the English army tomorrow and hoist the green flag over Dublin Castle unless you set about the organization of the Socialist Republic then your efforts will be in vain England will still rule you she would rule you through her capitalists, through her landlords, through her usurers, through the whole array of commercialist and individual institutions she has planted in this country. Nationalism without socialism, without a reorganization of society uh, on the basis of a broader, more developed form of co common property is the only national necessity. And I think because since the foundation of the state, we have continued to treat our citizens so poorly and not grant them economic uh, independence that many of these issues arise. We're quite happy to export nurses now that we train in our hospitals to get jobs in Britain. We're quite happy to export Irish women from this country to legally say they have the right to travel, to look after their health, to go to Britain for an abortion, but they can't have an abortion within their own country. And I think it was the failure to deal with the economic independence of many of the people who originally joined the Irish Army and then in desperation ended up having to desert and go to Britain. And that the key reason for me uh, examining the history books weren't ideological reasons in fact but economic reasons because a family and a soldier was expected to bring up his family on 14 shillings uh, during that war that was simply not enough to uh, uh, keep a family together and I think the question we have to ask ourselves is is poverty treason I'm quite sure that many of these people grappled hard, that it wasn't an easy decision. They knew that they would be vilified. They knew that there would be difficult um, decisions made to them, but clearly they felt they had no choice but to look after their families to take uh, that step uh, forward. And I think the way in which they were treated was uh, very shabby, was unacceptable, and I I'm glad that the issue is being tidied up uh, at the moment. I note the points made by the Minister uh, in relation to the fact almost 
well, it was almost posed by some of the speakers that the lack of access to the military courts was kind of doing them a favour uh, and that the emergency powers were kind of done to help them. I don't buy that argument. The emergency powers were always dodgy, they were always wrong. It was a starvation order which denied these men entitlements, gratuities, barred them from working in public and, and government jobs for seven years, disqualified them from unemployment benefits in Ireland and so on. And I think that was wrong. And I think actually one of the reasons why military tribunals weren't utilised is because of the time it's because of the media attention that would have been put on this issue. And let's remember that de Valera at that time had already embarrassed the country, thrown the international eye onto Ireland by officially commiserating with the German government on the death of Hitler. So clearly there was, if you like, a, another motive here in not bringing this issue to the attention, not being seen to deal with uh, the deserters who joined the Irish army and not wanting to uh, put media attention on this. I, I have very little time now, but emigration to Britain is continuing now. We're exporting our people because this country is failing to, to provide them with a decent standard of living. Our frontline service providers, we see Irish firemen operating in New York, we see Irish nurses in uh, England forced out of this country, and we see Irish soldiers having barracks closed down, having allowances taken from them in this, this uh, day and age. And I think the very circumstances which forced previous generations of Irish men in desperation to go and join the British Army are alive and well now under the policies of austerity which is driving many people out today uh, and I think we have to be weary of that. I move that the debate be adjourned.